toxicity of a nitrate. I found her dead to the head through the fence and still had some grass in her mouth. Flat out sex. Uh, we still didn't know what was going on, but we knew, knew she was in bad shape. I think we figured out what happened to her. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Turners Bison, and welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, back out here the next day. I'm gonna go check that uh, yearling. I, I got an idea, a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna see as far as yesterday evening of what Kevin and I kind of saw quickly happen. Uh, I'm, I'm not wanting to go over here to where she was, but uh, I think I know what I'm gonna find, which is not good. But I just came out here as a kind of readjusting the float on this and uh, I tested it yesterday and make sure uh, it was working and they're uh, they're definitely drinking out of this fresh water that come it's actually rural water so it comes from the ponderosa if you, if you didn't catch last week's video i ran 300 foot of uh, hose basically from the corner of the ponderosa the rural water all the way to here with kevin's help and brooks's help we've got uh some fresh water here now for the bison uh, just because i'm taking a quick precaution because of uh, the activity, I think I'm gonna have to say is a loss of a one of our yearlings, unfortunately. And so I'm gonna go check her out now. And uh, but but the reason I did this, uh, the water thing, is I thought maybe with her uh, quick behavior of going downhill so fast, maybe it was the water going bad because we're in a drought and the the pond uh, is definitely losing lots of water and going dry. So when that happens it gets very concentrated and you know, lots of uh i'm sure bacteria and algae and uh, lots of bad stuff could be consumed by these guys so that's why i put this water tank up here as soon as i could uh, within hours of her uh behavior and uh, being so sick so let's go uh, check uh, the pasture and see what we find All right, so gotta use this. You know what that means. Chicken, scared the crap out of me. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're chasing all those. That gum chicken was out here chasing grasshoppers. All right, guys, so back up here at the Ponderosa barn. Um, I guess you've figured out what has happened, unfortunately. We, uh, we have lost one of our South Dakota yearling heifers. And uh, it's uh, not something you want to talk about. It's not something you want to put on here. But it's part of it. Uh, you're raising livestock. You're raising animals. Um, doesn't matter if you, you got a dog or a cat, too. A pet. Uh, things like this can happen. Unfortunately, uh, just by talking to Doc, here's the conversation that we had. I was able to record some of it as he was discussing what probably caused her to die. Um, here's the conversation. Okay, because the hemoglobin uh, binds up and doesn't carry iron where it can carry oxygen, so they suffocate. Well, it's called met, met hemoglobin. So. Well, she 
but I mean by eight o'clock like I said she was laying down and she she was having trouble breathing yeah so she couldn't get enough air no so nitrates I mean it, it could be in Johnson grass it could be just a lot of plants yeah. huh right and, and with the drier and hotter it gets the more they come the worse they get okay well, the first thing I did was I put a fresh water tank out here with a hose on it, with a pump, uh, just so I could get clean water if that was the case. So that was the first thing I did, but I think uh, we're dealing with something different. So I guess the only thing I can do is maybe try to put them in another area where there's less plants, but dang, and give them hay, huh? And, and hay, yes, sir. Yeah, what you're trying to do is keep them full of fiber and hay so that they're not out grazing so much. Um, I've got four-way blend in here. I've been feeding them four-way blend for months, these Canada and South Dakota yearlings. So, I mean, completely healthy, beautiful yearling, good hair, good, I mean, everything. Jeez. Obviously, uh, conditions from the drought just keep getting worse um, some new stuff that I'm learning when it comes to all the effects of a drought and uh, what doc says is as the drought gets worse the plants the toxicity or the plants toxic nature comes up rises so I think that's what it unfortunately the drought is having more effects than I even thought it could so I said well what do I do about brush hog and he said well that's a risk to take to go and brush hog because you better leave what plants you got and um, so the question is is I don't know what plant it is a lot of people are having problems with Johnson grass um, in Oklahoma being toxic and we always knew that Johnson grass is toxic but you know according to Doc they'll they may eat some uh, poisonous or toxic plants uh, it's how much consumption that they have of it uh, in order to get them and he said sometimes they'll start eating it and then they just it makes them want to eat it even more he says sometimes and he's had cattle uh he told me he had a he had a cow one time reach to the fence to eat some johnson grass and it killed her so fast her head was still hanging in the fence that's how fast it killed her with grass in her mouth johnson grass and I found her dead with her head through the fence and still had some grass in her mouth. Oh my. All right, so what I'm having to do right now is I'm gonna put out some hay. Um, I've gotta do some research on plants, obviously. I think uh, there's a couple of plants out there. There's obviously a plant out there that uh, she consumed. Um, but the funny thing is, guys, I had told Doc, I've got a feeder out there for him. Uh, you see the big blue uh, Oklahoma Pride feeder out there they've got feed i've been giving them hay i've got to do my best just to keep them full and so the same thing with the dunbar herd is uh i just want to keep them full to try to reduce that and um, hopefully we don't have any more problems Put it here under the shade. There's the yearlings over there. There's the bunk feeder. I'm gonna take one over there to them. Get them taken care of. Big Joe and them got one. They're out here grazing.
Well, now that we've talked to Doc and got some good info on a very probable cause, I'm gonna walk through here and check the others. See what's going on. If there's any other ones showing signs. Oh, glad you're awake. Can't lose any more. This flat out sucks. They're all looking healthy. They react quickly to me. I always get a head count too, is what I always do. And her bricks in my last video, she was copying and counting one, two, six, eight, nine, twenty-two. Twenty-three down to twenty-two now. They're all here, looking okay. Just got to keep a close, close eye on them. I'm out here uh, walking back to my truck, and in the meantime, I was checking the herd and overlooking these yearlings, the rest of them, the other 22. But well, something I did, I did want to bring up to you guys is right now I'm standing basically in the middle of where this fire went through uh, the property back in Oh, I think February, March, somewhere in there. I forgot when, but it was still winter time when it went through. But this, you can see the ground here, obviously. Here's, here's, there are good things about fire, and I love fire. I'm kind of a little bit of a pyro, but um, I, I like the technique of fire, and it's been used for hundreds of years by the Native Americans and, and lots of people, and there's ways to do it the correct way. And that's why I'm working with the NRCS for a future uh, prescribed burn here at the Ponderosa on part of the property you guys hadn't seen much of uh, that has a lot of bad fencing won't get to in a while. But we get to this point, prescribed burns can be very beneficial to your land. But uh, sometimes if you don't have the rainfall to follow a, a prescribed burn, uh, it sucks basically. So. You can see this is a uh, pretty bare. It's been grazed heavily because uh, this was the fresh growth that they had. And, and remember, the big Joe herd was out here first, and now the yearlings are obviously. But uh, this was grazed first because that fresh grass, easy to consume. You don't have to fight with everything else. Now I'm going to step right over here, and you can see the break. I mean, literally, you can see the break right here. And so we've got lots of grass lots of cover which is protecting uh the base layer of the grass and the root system and all those things um and yes there are weeds here and whatnot but you can see the difference between uh where the burn didn't go and where it did go they went after this hard corn grazed it um but it does look low and poor right now there's still a, a good foundation of grass here but it is low because there's no growth and, and they hit that hard. But uh, here, it's a good thing the fire didn't come through this entire pasture. Um, and it's all about timing. Prescribed burning is all about timing, but it's a good thing because we have these grasses here and a lot of this grass is, is blue stem. And I see some Bermuda and whatnot, some other grasses, I don't know, but there's a lot of native here. And because the fire didn't go through here, they're able to uh, still consume this grass that is left and it's good cover when you're going through a drought and it's 100 degrees every day and the sun is blasting it so uh, it, it's a good thing that the fire didn't go through the whole thing even though at the time I wish it did but you got to have the rainfall to follow your prescribed burns well this is handy that's a brand new hose Alright guys, so uh, this is a, uh, here's a group of yearlings 
This is just a small portion of them. There, a lot of them are starting to make their way up from the bottom pasture, coming up to this blue feeder. This is the blue feeder that I was talking about earlier. But uh, if you're just now watching this and, and you're behind a little bit, go back and watch my previous video of uh, something that I encountered with um, uh, this yearling heifer. Uh, some things I've never seen before. Uh, if you did watch my last video, you'll understand kind of what's going on. But if, if some of you are confused, I want to clear it up right here for you. Um, first of all, a lot of you that have been watching me and following me along for the whole time um, you know that this is a this is a channel just for raising bison, um, guys. And it shows everything that kind of goes behind bison ranching. Now I'm about that big on the entire bison ranching scale, but this is what we do locally. This is some things that we do uh, around a small bison ranch. And, and, I, and I put myself out there and try to show you guys everything that goes on. So uh, I want you to know that. And those of you that have been following me understand what this channel is about. So I want to give you a time on on all this on what happened and how fast it happened two o'clock I came over here I had a meeting at 2 30 with a natural resource conservation service gentleman that I've been working with about prescribed burns already had that scheduled came over here at two o'clock and one of the yearling heifers from my South Dakota uh, Canada group was right over here all by herself and the rest of them were in the shade because it's been over 100 degrees every day that was at two o'clock and the first thing I did was I noticed she was by herself. So I drove the ATV up to her and she didn't move. Okay, that's a first red flag. She should have got up and, and been scared and run off. She didn't. So what I did was to uh, uh, politely and softly tapped her with my foot just to give her a safe distance and myself from anything happening in case she decided to jump up. I'm on the back of her, not on the front where she would jump forward. So I uh, tapped her with my foot lightly and she didn't really get up. And so finally Haas came over, the bull that's part of this group came over and he sniffed around, he's being really nice. He was checking on her, he knew something was wrong. Um, and she got up. And so when she got up, uh, I just went up to her and I was kind of uh, soothing her and petting her and she never moved. And so I knew something serious was going on. I wasn't sure because these animals are a little bit skittish. Um, and they're getting a whole lot better. Run across the back of the pasture on the ATV since I was already out in the pasture. Met the gentleman at 2.30, from 2.30 to 3.30. Came back over here and she was gone. And then, so I went and counted the herd. I found the herd and I started counting. And that's what you do when you do a herd check. I know how many I have in here. I had 23. Well, I could only find the group of 22. I had one missing. So I skimmed the pasture and I found her. She had walked probably over a hundred yards. And now at this point, she's over here by herself again. Once again, I get up close to her. This time, I don't, I can't even touch her. I, I drive up the ATV to her and get within about 10 yards. This is about four o'clock. Come on, girl. And she walks off. Now at this time, I'm noticing some staggering because it's the first time I've uh, watched her walk. And she's staggering some. And so when she starts to stagger off, I'm like... The first thing I do is I call Doc Parsons. Now I had the opportunity. I call Doc. He's my guy for everything. And so I call Doc and uh, he says, uh, get her a shot of Drexen. Drexen is a very strong and the best antibi antibiotic vaccination that you can get. Now, with that being said, you have to have a prescription to do that. So Doc is about 35 or 40 minutes from me. He said, call the vet. Um, call the local vet, and there's only one vet in Murray County that does big animals. And what I mean by that is big livestock, cows, sheep, horses, bison, and those things. He said, call them. They may can get you the Drexen shot. And at this time, we still don't know what has happened. Okay, I want to be clear. We still don't know what has happened. So I call the, this local vet, and they said, well, you're going to have to bring her in to get a prescription. I said, well, can Doc call a prescription in? No, you cannot do that. Doc cannot c call a prescription in to the local one that's about a mile from me and and get the prescription. I said, no, you're gonna have to bring her in. I said, well, that's not really gonna work because we're gonna stress her out even more when we do that. So, and I can't catch her out in the middle of pasture. And if I try to rush her up to the barn and do all that, it's, it's going to put more stress on this animal. And so 
I said, that's not possible. And basically the conversation ended. Uh, but Doc did say before I got off the phone with him previously, hey, if you got any LA 300, you can give her that. Well, so Kevin did have some. And this time I've already called Kevin because he knows he's he's been down this road and dealt with animals and whatnot before. So I called Kevin and uh, Kevin brought some LA 300 over. Uh, and, and, and with all this happening, um, I had to go get Brooks. Um, and in the meantime, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Well, it's eight o'clock, it's cooled down. Kevin and I met at the Ponderosa. Uh, we met over here uh, and I wanted Kevin to look at her because he's had some experience with this. He knows a lot about these animals and he helps them take care of them. I said, Kevin, we come look at this yearling heifer. I don't know what's going on. Well, it's eight o'clock. Kevin and I drive back out to the pasture when the last time I saw her, the last area I saw her, she didn't go very far. This time she was laying down on her side she was obviously struggling she uh she was having a hard time breathing so within six hours she was having a hard time breathing now i want you guys to understand something uh at four o'clock when i'm running around uh, trying to figure out what to do i can't take her to the vet uh it's almost five o'clock anyways they won't make a, a a call and run out here and so by the time she's laying on her side, Kevin brings the LA 300 over, which is another antibiotic, and he gives her a shot of antibiotic by eight o'clock. Um, and now we still don't know what's going on. We have no clue what's going on uh, with this yearling heifer. And none of the other ones by this time are showing any signs, any other signs. She's the only one. And so Kevin and I give her a vaccination and we know at this time, things have gone downhill, which I brought that to you in my last video. I said, things are not looking very good, basically. And they weren't at this time. So a couple of things that came to my mind uh, after the four o'clock thing is one, water. I said, uh, I know the pond is getting low and, and, and they, do peep, they do poop and pee in it. And just, just like every other animal and, and, and that you know lives in, in, in the wild and whatnot. They drink out of the creeks, they drink out of the lakes, they drink out of ponds, any water source they can get. And they have a pond. And uh, so my first reaction was to fill up water tanks and that's exactly what I did. They're sitting right up here. And so that was my first reaction. I did that after four o'clock or so when I was running around. One of the things that we couldn't understand, and you can look back here and if you've been following me along, you know that we take care of our animal. These animals are very healthy. They have a great hair. They are full and they just, they, they look really good right now. And even with the drought, we've got the feeder, we've got hay. We're doing everything we can to still take care of these animals. Um, and, and that just goes, that's just more expensive for us. And right now I, I'm at the point where it's just the mercy of rain is what we need and these animals need that's what they want they want to go graze that was the thing guys is we uh we're like these animals are so healthy she's so healthy what's going on so next day here we are so when i called doc um the next morning he explained to me everything and uh so i went out there to check her and doc said check her vulva open it up and tell me what color it is and that's exactly what I did. I had him on the phone and um, I checked her and it was purple. And apparently purple means toxicity or uh, that she died of uh, nitrates. So what plant is out here? I don't know. Animals have been in this pasture for a long time. We're not sure what plant it is. Uh, all the other animals have not shown any signs whatsoever and are doing great. So one of the questions I asked Doc was, can you give them a vaccination to reverse the toxicity? Can you do that? And he said, no, the only thing you can do is give them an IV. And he named off a certain uh, drug or whatever to help um, do that. Um, he said, you can do that in cattle sometimes. Here's the problem with bison guys. Um, it, and I know there's some bison producers out there that will, will back me up on this. Guys, these animals right here are way different than cattle. They are a high stress animal. They're a very social animal, but when you work them, they get very stressed out. That's any bison, mine that are super calm, wild, Yellowstone, any of them. They get stressed out very easy. And here's the thing about bison 
is when you do stress them out, you make things completely worse, especially if they're already sick. If they're already not feeling good or have a bad condition or an underlying condition, and then you go and work these animals and try to load them up in a trailer, should have probably been dead sooner. That's what's tough about raising these animals and a lot of people don't know that. It'd be nice if I could have just gone out there and gave her a shot and reversed the toxicity. Yes, absolutely. That'd have been awesome. And I'd be, I'd be, I wouldn't have lost an animal today. But unfortunately, this is how it is. And we still have to, we learn from it and we grow from it. That's just part of raising these animals. You know, guys, I, one of the things is part of ranching, it does, or part of farming, you're going to lose crops. You're gonna lose cows, you're gonna lose sheep, goats, you're gonna lose animals. And uh, if it's not toxic plants, bad water. And if you're in Yellowstone, it's the wolves and the bears that are taking the bison. So um, I hope you guys understand a little bit more. We do everything we can to take care of these awesome animals. And uh, unfortunately, um, we lost one today. You're learning. I'm trying to teach you something <laughs> off of my experience and um, learn something new. And that's uh, that's what it's about. Just and I hear from all these ranchers all the time is uh, these bison people is you, just when you think you got it, you don't. And uh, I know I'm always learning. We're always learning. It's uh, that's part of life. Is always learning as we get older. So uh, unfortunate, but uh, she'll go down as a loss. Thank you guys for watching. If you got any questions or comments or or any good information on on toxic plants that could possibly be out here um, with the native grasses here in in this part of Oklahoma, uh, then let me know. Leave a comment down below. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna do a little bit more research in the meantime too. Thank you guys for all your comments and I uh, appreciate you guys watching us so much raising these uh, awesome animals. Thank you guys. See you soon.